hi again. <laughs> so yeah, now we've had our first call with the client. Um, and then usually after that, we just kind of debrief and then start yeah, the brainstorming process. So right now on this video, we brought uh, Jeppe uh, and Malik with us as well. So Jeppe, you'd like to introduce yourself? Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Jeppe and I'm a technical concept artist here at Wisla. And the next person in line. That's me. I, I'm Malik, and I am a senior concept artist here at Vizlev. Uh, mostly focus on environments. Yeah. So, Yannick, we just ran through the brief in the previous video. So, will you please take it away? Yeah. Yeah. And, and many of our uh, ideas were luckily confirmed by the clients. Uh, they, yeah, they have these three pillars: space, frontier, and hope. And they want three mood pieces for their uh, green light deck that kind of highlights each of these. Um, and our initial idea was to show uh, these different ideas on different scales as well. So have space from the space scale and have frontier from sort of a, a city scale and then have hope on a very intimate scale oh. where you can actually see yeah. people attack. Sorry, I'll just, I'll just drag. So this frontier was this image here and space is this image here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, I'll just delete my very scribbly writing there. Cool. Yeah. So I mean, Yebe and Malik, you have some different abilities. So we sort of like we'll play to the strength of each team member. Um, when you have, did you read through all of this now? Did you get a chance yep. to look at all this? I mean, in the last video, we we went through it. Did it give you any idea of like where where we are at? And is there any ideas that are already springing to mind of what we have? Because the client says. We, they need three mood pieces, and this is for a green light. So that means that internally in the studio, they sort of need to propel this to the next stage in a production. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, feel free to start dropping in ideas. Uh, we have these references, and we have all these uh, words up here. And then, of course, the most important is the the pillars uh, that they have here. Hmm. So, yeah, take it away. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. You get that uh, that kind of space western vibes mm -hmm. to it. Uh, it really has that. Like I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of. It's it's kind of reminiscent of like maybe b beyond these games over here. That that it's kind of like I get the feel that it's it's a bit like shanty town esque uh, Fallout Three kind of kind of mood to it, but but more hopeful in in that sense. Yeah. Um, and luckily, we played all of this game. I didn't play Destiny that much. I just watched a little bit of YouTube. I don't know, Malik, you played it. We all played for Cycles, and we all played Borderlands, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I played Borderlands a lot, so I know what I'm talking about there. You guys <laughs> rock a lot, so you guys know what you're talking about there. So let's combine yeah. our efforts to just know everything about everything. Um, um, yeah, but if we have... Uh, did it say any deadline? Yeah, did we put a deadline for this, actually? We work with yeah, them. they need it in, uh, in, in three weeks. So oh, yeah, so we better get, get moving. So we've, we need three move pieces that sort of showcases the fundamental of this game. And I think one of the things that I said that in the previous video as well, that hope, I think that Hope and Frontier is something that I would actually like to really tag onto because this, I think that's a quite unique thing because a lot of future visions are quite bleak. So I think if we try to play into this, like, uh, because it says uh, colorful, vibrant, and fresh visual design over here. If we try to dig into that specific thing and say, hey, we can make a, t a, a game that looks quite different from what uh, you otherwise would see in games, like bleak future vision, always <laughs> no hope for humanity. But maybe we could tie into, like, couldn't it be nice to have a very colorful, vibrant world where you have fun in and not where you die every time you turn a corner. I think that actually, mm. like, that could be a good fundamental, uh, like, a base for all our images. So we need to uh, make... Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, we need to make free images also, and we have very limited time. And I think also that's, again, that's why we brought you, Jeb, and you, Malik, in on this, because we have worked together before, so we know each other's strength. And I know, Jeb, you are a master in Blender, so you'll probably get cracking with setting up some assets for all of us and share across because that's really yep. important when we are working in a, under a short deadline and when we need to align all the stuff that we do because 
from a city scale to a, a, a um, oh, sorry from a street scale to a city scale to an implanted scale we need to st everything needs to still look the same so i think we like in the next kind of a couple of videos we're going to showcase a little bit of how we work together as a team because i, I think they're quite interesting as well but maybe yep. we should start for this just dragging in some reference because we have the four images over here and we have this little uh, Zelda inspired image down here. What what else? What else do you guys when you when you hear these words, when you when you see these things, what do you what do you get out of this? Let's just drop in some images, let's just get the brainstorm going. Oi, already way ahead of it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah just throw in some images from, from Borderlands because uh, I mean the client mentioned that as one of the one of the references. Mm -hmm. And also they have that kind of Bit of a shanty town vibe going on. There's some sci-fi uh, elements in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, some Western vibes. Um, so I think we can use that as a source of inspiration. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, and real life shanty towns might be a bit. Uh, oh, I was sitting this again. Actually, actually uh, that's a good question. I don't know, but I think it's a game. <laughs> but yeah, like real life shanty towns, uh, maybe. It's just, I mean, now we're starting to look at other screens because we'll start to search. Yeah. Uh, feel free. Yeah, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, go on. I, I think the, uh, the 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 town from Elite Battle Angel oh, yeah, was really true. like yeah, that. It's that that manga of like uh, kind of shanty and but still like hopeful and and colorful. Mm -hmm. oh. I think there isn't it They're, like based on Brazil or Cuba and stuff like that. Where it's yeah, yeah, it has those like uh, colonial kind of colors to it. Uh, like the 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 pale green and the pale red and yeah, the yeah, the yellows, uh, I think they could be really cool to implement. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, exactly. I remember also from Brazil that you have a lot of these uh, towns where they just add so much color, uh, which is really really nice. So I can see some sort of scrap town based. Oh yeah, you dropped a little in here. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really nice. I think actually that's a toned down version of reality over here, which is fun that the reality is much more vibrant and colorful. But yeah, definitely this is a good reference, I think. Um, they also mentioned uh, Destiny. Uh, Leek, you are the Destiny expert here. <laughs> Do you have any <laughs> images where you think, oh, that's really, really good from Destiny? Uh, I think from Destiny, it's mostly the the environments that are interesting because it's very uh they're good at making these epic alien environments yeah uh, yeah we gotta remember that we are on an alien world as well yeah. um like this is not earth we are somewhere just refining a planet yeah um that so. uh, that reminds me like while the uh shanty towns are uh, have some interesting looks to them i think it's also important that we have some sort of uh uh, spaceship uh, scrap in there or like to see that they're they're using uh what uh, technology they have to to build their houses with yeah so so whatever like if if something big breaks down they they, they use that for uh, to, to exactly build, yeah, to, yeah to rebuild or build their town so maybe it's like we have this giant corporation that have all yeah. these machines and then all the machines break down and then they get uh, uh, taken apart uh on the, I think it's it could be like a good way to tie together like the surface of the planet with the with the with the space shot as well. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that's gonna be like quite difficult to maybe tie in probably uh, probably together. Yeah. Um, that uh, so so if you can implement some of the design language from from like some spaceships or or can can nail down a design language for the primary cooperation in in this like area yeah. and and utilize it in both like corporate structures in shanty towns and in the space structures yeah. outside i think you'll create like a cohesive so, so, so what shape you, language yes, so, so yeah. what you mean is like if we have some sort of uh, intergalactic freighter that yeah yeah, yeah. Not, no, yeah even sorry we have a corporation that have a very specific design language maybe everything is very boxy and square um like if this is a spaceship or an excavator or whatever but this is the like the core the core language is basically boxy mm. yeah that could be nice. mm. yeah i think it would also be a good way to tie pillars through even though they need a mood shot that kind of represents each pillar i still think each pillar should be visible in each of the shots as well so even like hope should be visible in the space image and space should be visible in the hope yeah definitely. as well mm. so 
way to tie it all together. Are these uh, these are Destiny? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We were just talking about Destiny. I, I remember this uh, social hub area where you, that was pretty uh, pretty cozy, but oh, also very nice. makeshift. And you can still see there's a, they they still use some technological uh, elements in there, like uh, telecommunication mm. and uh, some. You can see some thrusters and stuff. <clears throat> so I think it could be cool to have that implemented into like the more shanty town kind of yeah, yeah, vibe. I actually, yeah. I, one of the things that I, I, I the the green stuff, <laughs> because a lot of these seems really barren and and, and cool. Well, and I, I, I dropped in the planets here, which is also really barren. But what if, we, for example, like we have the big planets on a surface level that's very barren, but then when we have these mega trenches where maybe the city is in, we actually have a more lush environment because whatever moist is in the air actually goes into these trenches. And that means, like, for example, we have green stuff. I'll just drop it to a green yeah. Yeah. So on the side here, we'll have moss and whatever, like, fungus they're growing so that we get, like, again, poke positivity into this uh, environment so it's not as <laughs> bleak as this. Yeah. Uh, so I just dropped in the pocket excavator. <clears throat> these these are just mad beasts. And then this uh, ship breakers beach in India where they're taking these apart. So I think it could be really cool to take these big, uh, as you say, yeah, the spaceships or space excavators apart and then turn that into a town. Yeah, it's a it's a cool idea with the with having like a barren overworld and a lush underworld. Mm. It could be like a, a positive take on the um on the the arcane city uh the netflix show like uh they have like hildover is a nice town on top and then zorn is the like the the pit the the evil town ish mm. um and it could be fun to like kind of flip that around maybe mm. and have it be a nice under city and then on top it gets more and more hostile because of the environment and and maybe it's like it was supposed to be a hostile environment, right? So maybe there's like some kind of like alien creatures yeah. roaming around or something. Yeah, I mean, we, we could say that, for example, like, I, I think it's also pretty uh, open brief. So up, mm. up here, for example, we have a lot of radiation coming in. That means that up here we have all these Goliath creatures that uh, roam around and are trying to kill you. But down in the trenches, they are more protected. Mm. Yeah. I think to, just to nail the uh, yeah this kind of western vibe, I think it also needs to be this kind of American desert to some of the areas. But I mean that could be yeah, yeah. this could be on top, right? Actually, um, yeah. Also, the, then, I mean, if we have this hostile uh, world, off world, this this could just as well be this on a planetary hmm. scale. So if we have this small moon where they found out that there's a lot of unobtainium or <laughs> whatever bullshit material <laughs> they're mining. Uh, there could just be a desert world. It's like, a, it's a burned world from, because the every time the, the planet comes out from the, okay, I need to draw this. So we have a giant planet and then we have the small moon and then we have an, a very hot sun. Every time it's in the shadow, everything is good. But as soon as it comes out from the shadow of this planet, it fla flames everything on the surface because it's super hot, the sun. Um, so it, there could be some like big scorch marks, and that's why you need to live in trenches also because it's, you're sort of protected as long as you. Yeah, at least if you're not the big mega corporation, they might have the right equipment to survive out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, right yeah. Type of shielding, but once you're like the freelancers or the subcontractors, you might need to yeah hide. But, and it's yeah. also like uh, we could tie into uh, Dune, the new Dune movie. Actually, quite uh, nice that uh, what's it called the the mega structures they have on the surface. Um, Big bunkers. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean the the spice harvesters. Uh... Also spice harvesters, and but um, I don't know what uh, Arrakis is called. Arrakis. I don't know my Dune well enough. Ah, that's the city. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it? Yeah. No. That's no. Arrakis is the planet. Uh... Yeah. Uh... Because in that movie they talk about that it's being so hostile and so violent yeah. that that uh, environment that they need to protect themselves from these like sort of. Brutalistic bunker kind of. Yeah, yeah they're in a. a, a oh, yeah, the city. Yeah, so. yeah, the city is called Arakeen. Arakeen. Mm. There we go. Um, yeah. Also, because I mean, wind plays a really important role in the, this movie. So all of these are sloped to sort of mm. deflect the wind, which mm. is really nice. 
And every time you have windows, you have these slits that uh, sort of prevents wind from going in. You still get wind, but it slow down. There's a quite mm. like I, you see these on highways actually when you are driving on bridges to prevent you from being pushed away from wind uh, by wind. So I mean, we could we could play on all these uh, like hostile and stuff, nice below. Uh, just g- get a lot of contrast because it's also like. When you go on mission, you might go up on land and do stuff. Oh, there's a spice harvester that broke down. You need to get it back because now it's, it's surrounded by critters. Oh, you need to do this and this and this. It could also yeah. give some really nice color contrast, I think. I think it was a good contrast in having this mega corporation that is kind of well-designed and well oiled machine that just runs with this perfect design. And then once stuff breaks down, you have this... Yeah, this whole machinery of soft contractors are just like all these people that kind of just scavenge like in the, I just got reminded of the Jedi uh, Fallen Order in the beginning. You're on this planet where you just basically scrap uh, old spaceships and use them for new parts. So there could be this whole industry of scrapping uh, this corporation ships and using that for building shanty towns or building new parts or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well- that it would make total sense if the environment is super hostile, right? Then equipment breaks down easily and you hmm. have to scrap it and make new stuff. Yeah. 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 I uh, think... Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just searching. I was thinking about the broken destroyer from uh, Star Wars. Let's just see again. Yeah. I think uh, we could really lean into some, some brutalist architecture for the corporation. It could look really cool in contrast to, like, a shanty town. Hmm. You just gotta be careful. It just that doesn't end up being Dune because yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, not yeah. that uh, frontier or Western That's feel. True. Right? It's a bit more. That's true. It's a bit more. Yeah, I'm, go- I'm gonna push for that one. As, uh, I'm, go- I'm gonna search for Saloon here because we need, we need something that says Western time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There we go. Yeah, so Dune, but Dune in the Saloon. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So we need something like this, but. Actually, this is the theater in London, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the, the Hayward. That's the gallery. Oh, this is gallery. Oh, yeah, Hayward right. Gallery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that one, just on a glance, it almost looks a little bit like a Western, like these these ones here. So I mean, maybe we could do this brutalistic architecture that looks like saloons. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm. But yeah, it's it's important to like because again, as as you did drop in Yannick, frontier. Uh, which is tied up to Western feel, so that we don't lose that in the space feel. I think uh, really the essence of at least the yeah, Borderlands and also this frontier feeling as well, right? That you have this, yeah, yeah Western. I think, I think Borderlands does right. quite well actually to preserve that Western scrappy frontiers. So we need to look yeah. more into that. Yeah, yeah, but you were saying. Yeah, I think if we switch around the material of the. Of, of the structures on the, the corporate side instead of it being like made out of like this very blocky concrete and stuff switch it up for some some other materials a nice uh, for nice plating or something like that could be yeah. could maybe make it a bit less oppressing <laughs> but, maybe but more of the hard, hard surface design of the spaceships as well yeah but it, uh, it also depends on like where is the hope in the story coming from I, I guess it's not from the corporation I guess it's from the people I think it's got to be in contrast to the corporation right mm. hope is always in contrast to something so I think yeah the way I understand the the backstory for this IP is that yeah there are these mega corporations that kind of just exploit as much as possible um, and then you have kind of humanity living in mm. spite of that almost right yeah yeah I almost feel like the saloons and the western fits better with the shanty town. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so so the, uh, we still have the um, the mega corporation is this like sleek hard surface. Uh, everything is clean, but then the mm. saloons are more the that's the people who work there who built it and go there and yeah, visualize. I, yeah, that would make sense that there was maybe also the shot for. For hope, yeah, that people are coming together and the corporation doesn't supply any of these uh, uh, other activities like, yeah, drinking or whatever you want to do in the West, yeah. right? So you kind of have to <laughs> do that elsewhere and maybe the subcontractors, subcontractors do that. They build that up yeah. around the yeah. edge of town. I think it's also like if we take these mega corporations that does this mining, then you have around this mine, you'll have a whole town supporting 
these like you'll have into like you'll have uh, people living in a place. You'll have bars and entertainment that needs to support this mine. You'll have uh, all the equipment and uh, like uh, what is it called repair bays and, and restructuring and repurposing and all this stuff. So you'll have this whole city supporting this mine. So I guess we can look at it as that there's a mine here in the middle. And then you have all this stuff around it to support this. And then they take things apart also and then re reuse it and repurpose. I guess it's also when you add in a planet, there probably is like air dropped material in and then you have you need to deal with what you have there. Mm. Mm. But uh, it's really, really, there's so much good discussion here. I already think like with these contrast talks and the, like the, the heart mm. of the desert and the fact we need to adhere to the pillars and this Western mm. feeling. I think there's already some really good talks. I'm thinking. Yes. Oh, sorry. No, Yannick, go on. Yeah, yeah, maybe we should just start to kind of spread out uh, the the idea. So I think, yeah, the difference. We only have three shots, and we have uh, three artists. So I think we should kind of divide them between each of you. Mm -hmm. And as you said earlier, like, yeah, yeah, we could do very well at space one. Uh, Dress, you could do the frontier, and then uh, Meli could do the hope. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and then we should probably just start, yeah, exploring, starting doing some 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 roughs. Yeah. for each of these so we can present that to the client and and get some response if, if they like this direction if it makes sense for them um, yeah that would be and what the, they had in mind that would be the natural next step is to take all this organize it a little bit more divide it into whoever does what and then do the first ideas and iterations and then yeah present it to the client and say this is what we came up with based on all of this we have talked about mm -hmm. is that the right direction does that support your vision if they give a go for that then we just push on with that so should we just jump yeah. to the next videos and just so yeah, i guess uh, like just to, to kind of uh, oh, really? summarize it all up so so yeah the space shot is going to show this intergalactic trade so it's going to be some spaceships showing mm, like these goods being shipped off world mm -hmm. we're going to have the frontier that's somehow going to show this uh, maybe divide between the dead uh, and hostile overworld and the like thriving uh, gorge world or whatever we call them and yeah. then we're gonna have these uh, shanty town saloon where people are having having a good time, yeah. In spite of this yeah. looming corporation in the background or something. Yeah. Before we we close off, yeah. do we do we have any idea of where where in time this is? Is it like ten thousand years in the future? Is it like near future or somewhere in between? I think it's about five hundred years in the future. I think five hundred years. Okay. So the client said, yeah. It leaves room for. For space magic, but uh, yeah, yeah. but still, magic, still, but not fully doomed ten thousand years. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no, yeah, not not. It still needs to be recognizable. Yeah. All right. We are on another world where we're actually mining it, so we but we have that amount of technology, uh, but yeah. we are still humans. Yeah. Yes, I'm. I'm thinking about the, like these three steps: hope, frontier, and space. Cl close further apart and then the the greatest vision of all that would really showcase the game in a good light yeah uh, really like yeah, highlight each three different aspects of the game and then yeah really, let's try to just inco uh, incorporate all these talks with the uh, hat into uh, each of our pictures yeah and the next step yeah would be to do some sketches for each of these show that to the client get some feedback and then iterate iterate on that so i think yeah. that's gonna be it for this video Cool. You? I'm excited. Yeah. All right. Let's just get started. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy, guys. See you in the next yeah. videos. Bye. Bye. Bye.